It's important to remember that the Orthodox Church stands fast and solid on, on the basis of, of, a, uh, of the traditional values that are found in the scriptures and that have been passed on from generation to generation without change. Without change. Uh, uh, from Christ and the apostles and onwards to our own day. And that we need to uh, conform our values and our lives to that. Because to be an Orthodox Christian is not, sim it's not a matter of just what you do on Sunday and you go to an Orthodox church with a, you know, uh, certain kinds of music and certain kinds of decorations and, and kind of ritual and all of that. Um, that's a tiny bit of it. So this, um, this reality of, of being an Orthodox Christian means not just to go to church and worship in a certain way. It means to live in a certain way. It's not uh, being Orthodox is not just going to Orthodox services. Being Orthodox means living Orthodox. And it's not just how, it's not just how we act. It's not just our actions. It's, it's how we think and how we conform our lives uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is, this is something I think very particularly uh, um, uh, important today uh, as, we, as we see this, you know, this movement in our society, uh, especially the, great, the remarkable event that happened uh, on Friday of the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Now, there are, uh, this is not a sermon about politics. I don't talk about politics usually. But there are, there are those who would make, who have made these uh, values that we have as Orthodox Christians into political issues. And in fact, most of the, most of the, most of the values that, we, that uh, we will be talking about in relation to uh, marriage and family and, and friendship and, uh, and life are being made somehow by some, you know, some groups into political issues. Um, I may or may not touch on the political aspect of that. But what's important is, is the church's teaching. Now that may class us and others would class us who share those values um, in what they would say is a very negative light and put us into some kind of political category. Um, but, and we can't help that. We can't help that. Um, people are gonna do what they're gonna do, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, and they don't care. But what's important for us is that we conform our lives and our minds and our hearts to the, the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the gospel. One of the clear teachings of the church from the apostolic era to our own day uh, as witnessed by such documents as the Didache, which was all, all undoubtedly written uh, uh, by the apostles or derives directly from the apostles, uh, as well as the fathers and the canons and, and the universal witness of the church, is that abortion is something that is absolutely unthinkable for Christians. That is, Christians, we have to definitively reject abortion. Um, this, is, this is not a matter of politics. This is a matter of our faith. And the reason that we, that we definitively reject abortion is because the moment at the moment of conception, a new soul has come into being. A soul with, a, with a, a rational mind and a soul with a noose. Now just because it's not fully developed yet, and which of us is fully developed? You know, do we ever become fully developed in this life? 
I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, just because it's fully developed, not fully developed, doesn't mean that that, that soul, that, that that person, that that being, uh, albeit two cells or a, whatever they call a zygote and all of this kind of stuff, doesn't mean that's not a human person. It is a human person from the moment of conception. That's why we celebrate Annunciation, that the conceiving of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit in the womb of Mary. We celebrate the conception of the Mother of God. We celebrate the conception of St. John the Baptist. These are not... Uh, the church's teaching is, is absolutely crystal clear and um, unarguable. Unarguable. Um, uh, you can reject it, but what are you rejecting? You're rejecting the church's teaching. You're rejecting the teaching of all the fathers for the past 2,000 years and back before that. There are many, many uh, uh, aspects to the uh, to the to our rejection of abortion. Um, certainly, of course, the murder of children is something that is absolutely uh, unthinkable for us. Um, whether they are uh, newly conceived or whether or whether they're about to be born. Or, as in some places are talking about, uh, a mother being able to murder her child um, as long as it's less than a month old. Post-birth abortion, so-called. This is something utterly unthinkable as for us as Christians. It's a grave sin, and it's a grave sin on our society. 65 million children have been murdered in our society, in our culture, legally. Which means we share responsibility for that. 65 million people. This is a horrific thing. But there are other aspects to... Uh, to abortion um, and its social effects, which are also very, very uh, central, um, or which have a, which have central meaning in the life of the church. For example, one of one of the one of the uh, uh, results of abortion, uh, as well as uh, contraception is that sex has no consequences. Well, that's not the point of sex. Sex has consequences. Children. Sex is about having children. And since the 19, 1950s and uh, the 1960s in our culture, um, with the promotion of... Um, uh, sex without consequences, what what have we had? But not only endless numbers of abortions, but we've had a society that has, that has lost the value of marriage. Marriage is something absolute and essential and holy. And it is one of the greatest values that Orthodox Christians hold of, of a Christian marriage. And what is that? It's a marriage that has been consecrated to be an icon of the kingdom of God. Because that marriage is a sacrament, that marriage, that uh, union of, of husband and wife in Christ by the Holy Spirit crowned in the church is an icon of the kingdom of God. It's an icon of the union that we have uh, together with Christ in his church. 
and the fullness of all that that means. Marriage is a means by which couples come together to assist each other and accompany each other on the way to salvation in which you take responsibility for the salvation of one another. See, we are, you know, this, all this Protestant ideology that has, that has infected um, and, and disfigured our culture, that my salvation is just between me and Jesus, is a lie. It's a lie. It's heresy. It's false. Your salvation depends on my salvation. My salvation depends on your salvation. Your, your husband's salvation depends on you, and your wife's salvation depends on you. Okay? And your children, and so forth. Because the reality is we're all in this together in Christ by the Holy Spirit. It's not just about me and Jesus. It's about taking responsibility for one another, bearing that responsibility for one another. So the family is, the family is not just uh, a bunch of people who happen to have, you know, um, similar DNA. It's not, not just a, a bunch of people who happen to live together who have a certain set of relationships that are... Uh, that may or may not be close, and so they so they all get together and play on their tel on their smartphones. A family is sacred. Sacred. There are two kinds of families in the Orthodox Church. There's the natural family of marriage, and there's monasticism. Two ways. Some are some are cut out for one way. Some are cut out for the other. There is no other Christian alternative lifestyle. Those are the only two ways of life that are blessed by the church, right? Think about it. Everybody needs to be part of a family. Because the family, rooted in Christ, rooted in the church, is the source of our identity. It's the source of our identity. It's who we are. It's our network of, of relationships that define us. You're somebody's brother. You're somebody's son. You're somebody's grandson. You're somebody's nephew. You're somebody's uncle. And on and on and on and on. You're somebody's friend. You're somebody's co-worker. All of these Network, this network of relationships is part of how we define ourselves. You're an Orthodox Christian. This is fundamentally about identity. But it's an identity that is not just a, a rational label, you know, because, uh, because, you, because you like Russian music and Byzantine liturgics. Right? Being an Orthodox Christian is about how you are, how you relate to God. And in God to everyone else who is in God. That unity is so important. That idea of our unity in Christ is so important. It's not just an idea, it's a reality. That's what it means to take communion together. That we all are the body of Christ together. Here again, it's not just me and Jesus. So where does uh, so where does abortion come in? Abortion completely relativizes the family. You can you can have sex, um, and and it doesn't mean anything. That which is which is given by God to be something sacred is as the most uh, profound means of communion um, uh, between a man and a woman. That's relativized. 
simply as a means of hedonism, of pleasure. And that is a disaster. And it's no wonder that our society is moving towards socialism in which our only identity is that given us by the state. Think about a society in which, say, instead of using your name and signing your name, all you would do is you would use your social security number. That that's who you are. How much you make, how much you spend, period. That's where we're in. That's where the society has been going. And as Christians, we have to absolutely and definitively reject that. And everything that, that works to destroy our Christian identity, our Christian families, our churches, and the influence of religion in, in the life of our community, of our society. You know, so, so this individualism, there's a, there's, a, there's a positive and healthy side to individualism, but there's also a very, very dark side as well. Because we are not interchangeable. Same thing with equality. Equality, yes. Equivalency, absolutely not. A man cannot be a mother. A woman cannot be a father. I know this is a political statement now, which is, but it's ridiculous that it's a political statement. It's absurd. It's just reality. It's just reality. The elimination of abortion is a step, a step to restoring the family. Because sex demands res people take responsibility for their actions. And it has consequences. And those consequences are children. How are you going to bring up those children? So. To sum up. The Orthodox Church. The Orthodox faith. To be an Orthodox Christian means that we live according to the teachings of the fathers, according to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Scriptures as interpreted by the Holy Fathers over the course of the centuries. It means that our identity is first and foremost in Christ. In Christ. And if we are, if our identity is in Christ, our identity is found in our relationships with one another and especially in our, in our family. The family is sacred. Marriage is sacred. Human life is sacred because it is it is a manifestation and a revelation and a spark of the divinity, right? And what can we do but give, but give thanks to God for, for, that, for that life which he has given to us and of, and of which he has made us co-heirs and co-creators through the act of procreation. Sharers in his divinity by grace and in affirming this.
we affirm that identity in Christ, that who we are is hidden with Christ in God. And that leaves no room for despair. It leaves no room for, uh, uh, for nihilism. It leaves no room for, uh, for hatred of, of others. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ, by which we live and define ourselves, in whom we live and have our being, is the very essence and the means to joy.